Elvis Presley really wanted his young fiance, Priscilla Presley, to move in with him in 1963, but her parents didn't allow it. The legendary musician eventually took matters into his own hands and called her parents to make some guarantees regarding their future together. But he wasn't completely honest. Since the release of Baz Luhrmann's newest biopic, Elvis, in theaters, Elvis Presley has been the subject of celebration in July 2022. There are many facts regarding the couple's relationship over the years that the film omitted, even though it briefly mentions Elvis's first encounter with Priscilla Presley, Nibolu, in 1959. Specifically, how Elvis persuaded the parents of the 16-year-old to allow her to move in with him at Graceland. In this video, we'll talk about the huge promise to Priscilla Presley's parents that Elvis Presley broke after she moved in with him. Elvis met Priscilla while serving in the U.S. Army in Friedberg, Germany. It was love at first sight, even though the young lady was just 14 years old at the time. In 1960, when the 25-year-old service in the Army came to an end, he left the nation and headed back to the USA. At the time, he was residing in Memphis, Tennessee, at Graceland. The young lovers remained in touch. They spoke on the phone all the time, and eventually the topic of Priscilla visiting Graceland to see Elvis came up. One summer, she joined him, and their falsehoods to Priscilla's parents began. When they promised the two that they would stay in Memphis, they actually went to Los Angeles to party. Meanwhile, Elvis's Memphis Mafia pals mailed Priscilla's parents postcards from Memphis in order to cover their story. She also saw him during Christmas in 1962. Yet Elvis yearned for more. He never wanted to be separated from Priscilla ever again. So, he began attempting to convince Priscilla to live permanently with him. However, there was one problem. The idea did not appeal to Priscilla's parents. So Elvis decided to take matters into his own hands. He called her mother, Anne, and stepfather, Captain Paul Beaulieu, and asked if he might permanently move Priscilla to the United States. He gave some assurances in an effort to reassure the worried parents. First and foremost, he promised that Priscilla would attend the best Catholic school money could buy. She would complete her education and earn a high school diploma when she was done. Not only that, but he informed Anne and Captain Paul that Priscilla would not be living with him in Graceland. As an alternative, he suggested that Priscilla move in with his father, Vernon Presley, who lived nearby and had recently remarried to a woman named Dee. As if that wasn't enough, Elvis informed Anne and Captain Paul that the young couple would be escorted everywhere they went. Elvis made one more attempt to persuade Priscilla's parents by claiming to love, need, and respect the young woman. This could have been interpreted as a veiled hint that he intended to marry her. The agreement was signed just three months later, in March 1963. Priscilla relocated to the United States. Not all Elvis' promises, however, were kept. Living with Vernon and his wife made Priscilla uncomfortable. So, she soon moved into Graceland with Elvis. But then there was a significant upheaval for the young couple and for Priscilla's domestic dreams. Elvis began taking on more roles as a movie star in Hollywood. As a result, he was frequently absent from Memphis for months at a time. Then, in 1963, Elvis began a romantic relationship with Anne Margaret, his Viva Las Vegas co-star. Their affair lasted little over a year behind closed doors, but Priscilla ultimately found out. She was enraged when she heard about it. She demanded that Elvis end the relationship and devote himself entirely to her. Elvis finally proposed to Priscilla during Christmas 1966. From then, things developed rapidly. On May 1, 1967, Elvis and Priscilla exchanged vows in a small private ceremony. After taking Frank Sinatra's aircraft into the city in the middle of the night, they got married in the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas. The couple celebrated in style, with the groom wearing a brocade silk tux and western boots 
and the bride wearing a beaded chiffon gown with long lace sleeves that she bought off the rack from Westwood. Later, they performed their first dance to Love Me Tender and dined on a six-tier yellow sponge cake that reportedly cost $3,200, approximately $22,000 in modern currency with inflation. Dennis Martik, the hotel's pastry chef at the time, told Memphis Magazine, each layer was filled twice with apricot marmalade and a kirsch-flavored Bavarian cream, coated with fondant icing and topped with royal icing and marzipan roses. Colonel Tom Parker invited intimate friends and family, as well as music business executives, to the small ceremony. Following their nuptials, the couple spent a month in the House of Tomorrow, a five-bedroom, five-bathroom home in Palm Springs, California. Lisa Marie Presley, the couple's only child, was born on February 1, 1968, exactly nine months later. I awoke at eight o'clock and realized labor had started, Priscilla wrote. Frightened, I called my mother in New Jersey, who advised me to call the doctor right away. He instructed me to proceed immediately to the hospital. I'd awoke Elvis gently and informed him that the big day had arrived. After calmly doing her makeup and a trip to the wrong hospital, the couple arrived just in time at the correct location to greet their new baby at 5.1 p.m. Elvis came in and kissed me, overjoyed that we had a wonderfully normal, healthy baby. He was instantly in love with her, Priscilla recalled. He was speechless, saying, I can't believe that I made part of this beautiful child. For the new mom, watching the musician as a father cast him in a different light. The man I loved and will always adore was in my hospital room that day, she added. He didn't have to pretend to be powerful, decisive, or sexy. He wasn't afraid to reveal his warmth or vulnerability. He didn't have to play the role of Elvis Presley, the superstar. He was just a man, my husband. However, the couple's relationship did not last. According to reports from 1996, Priscilla had a sexual relationship with her karate teacher, Mike Stone, in the early 1970s and informed Elvis that she was leaving him in 1972. Her choice followed the actor's own reported infidelities. He wasn't faithful, not that he had someone special, but when you're in the entertainment world, there's always that and I tried to turn my back on it, but I just didn't want to share him, Priscilla said in 2018. They eventually divorced in 1973. What do you think about Elvis Presley's broken promise? Comment your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching.